So, you know, what will it actually take to hack education? Right? It's such a, is it a, you know, do you start small? Do you start large? And how can just a few committed people, like the students that are here in this conference today, how can just a few people influence so many that are on the outside? Well, there's an interesting survey and study that was done recently by a gentleman by the name of Damon Centola. He's an associate professor in the Annenberg School of Communications at the University of Pennsylvania. He conducted a study on change and what it takes to make change happen. And he found out the magic number. Like there's a movie about the number 42. What movie is that? Something of the answer to the galaxy, Hitchhike, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The answer for everything in life is 42, right? Deep thought. But Damon, huh? Deep thought. The answer to life, the Deep universe, thought. and everything. Right? 42 was the number. But Damon Centola actually found out that the answer is 25. It's 25%. What they did, they created study groups and they brought people together. You know, you see those ads sometimes if you're riding on the bus or Brown University says, hey, for $25, you, if you, we want you to be a part of this study. So they created groups with about 50 people, 70 people, 100 people. And they found groups that all thought one particular way about something. So this group had an idea about one thing. Another group had an idea about another thing. And then secretly, Within that group, they had two or three people that they planted with a different idea. And their goal was to try to change the mind of the entire group. And they found that as they were changing people's minds one person at a time, it wasn't, the change didn't come about at 10%, 15%, nor 20%. But once they reached 25% consensus within the group, the remaining 75 people changed like that, almost overnight. And so this is empirical evidence, peer-reviewed scientific research that shows what it takes to actually bring about change. And you've heard of the concept thinking outside the box. I've titled this talk, Thinking Outside the Classroom, because in order to hack education, you have to think outside the classroom. In fact, Einstein has a saying, who knows a quote that I'm thinking of from Einstein about solving problems? It's a, about what it takes or what it does not take to solve a problem. Einstein says that you can never solve a problem within the same context that created the problem. And that's really when the concept think outside the box came from, emanated from Einstein, probably like everything else. I think, you know, eating apples, an apple a day probably came from Einstein, right? And it takes thinking outside the classroom because if there's only one thing, and I'm talking directly to the students that are here, this talk, is to you, to no one else. There's one thing that the students should learn from this pandemic, is that we, us adults, look at all the adults in here. We don't know what we're doing. We really don't. The students, you have given us the earth on borrowed time to take care of so that we, like our ancestors, handed it down to us. We're supposed to give it to you. And at this point, I think we've done a pretty horrible job. So now it's time for the students where you can grade us. And I think we get a big F. Why? Because we've known about pandemic viruses and we've known that we should prepare and probably do all these things, but not yet, not one nation on this planet was prepared. Even though we could have, we were more focused on our stocks and investments and other things, we weren't focused on making a better life for yourselves for the next generation, which is you. And I remember one student was saying, I forget who it was, but they said, she said, in the classrooms, if you bring up complaints or things that need to change, it's really, you get your hand smacked, right? That you're not supposed to do that. 
Well, guess what? That's what I feel like right now. Like people might be upset that I'm saying this, but I want you to realize that the adults don't know what we're doing and we haven't prepared for the future. But I really believe that over the next few years, in the next three years, the world of education is going to change more than it has in the past three centuries. And it's not going to come from the adults. Because the adults are going to try to convince you to make marginal changes, to simply take the existing system and put a few band-aids on it. But that's not going to do it. That's not going to bring about real change. And you already know that right at the onset, that 75% of the people at least are going to oppose whatever new ideas you have. But there's good news. And that good news comes in the form of listening to your inner voice. Already today, the students, you've already been brimming with little ideas and that, that can bring about change. And those little ideas, I want you to think of them as seeds. And while you may not have a very clear picture on this new forest that you're trying to create, it takes one acorn to create an oak tree and ultimately to create a forest. And as we saw today with Allison's design thinking workshop, it takes that one idea. And from there, you have to find just one other person who's passionate about your idea and your solution to a problem. You find that one other person, then you have your tribe. You ever hear the saying, your vibe attracts your tribe? And that's what they found out in the Annenberg study, that it starts off with two people that have the same amount of passion, the same vision, because one person going it alone is really, really tough. But when you have another person, it really, you're, you're greater than the sum of your parts. And then together, you can go out and start finding more people for your tribe. And ironically, great ideas spread the same way that COVID spread. COVID didn't jump from one person to 20 people. It went from one to one. And then those two people, they infected another two people. Then those four people infected eight. And that's how great ideas. But you really want to, if, if people aren't passionate about your idea, don't let them into your club. They'll kill, you, they'll kill your vibe. They will, they'll stop rowing when you need the boat to be rowing the fastest. This is what we mean about being able to hack education. As you grow, you build your community and you get to that 25%, you will notice that the adults will start listening to you. Who, what's the name of the young lady She's the environmentalist and she was named Time Person of the Year. Greta Thunberg, Turnberg, I think. Right, that, that, I am so proud of that young girl. She's a teenager, but she's traveling all around the place and she only goes from country to country by boat. And I believe that she, she uses like a rubber band engine or something like that because she wants to save the world, right? She doesn't want to use gas or fuel but think about her she's probably an amazing example to use for that and you'll know that you have a great idea because like victor hugo said nothing is more powerful than an idea whose time has come and we can try to pretend but the education system that we created today really isn't working there's a total of does any, do any high school students know what the total amount of high school debt there is right now? Of, of, of college loan debt. What's the total amount of college student loan debt? Anyone? 
one point six trillion dollars. One point six trillion dollars. Oh, billion. Trillion. One point six trillion. It's the second largest form of debt to home mortgage loans. That means that the system isn't working. People aren't able to pay it back. Yet we keep moving, we keep going and enrolling more students. And yet with all that debt and money spent on education, did you know that 70% of Americans make between 20 and $49,000 per year? 70% and that number is growing larger and larger each and every year. So we need an idea whose time has come. And in terms of hacking education, what I realize is that in my life personally, and this is my story, and Michelle, you can tell me how I do with my story. I am sort of like that Luke Skywalker. Because when I was growing up, I chose technology to be my future very, very early on. And when I graduated college, I landed in a job when I was just a couple of years out of college, I was making $80,000 a year, had $15,000 annual bonus. And this is in the nineties before most of you were born. And all of my friends began knocking on my door. They would show up. They was like, Hey, Arnell, can you help me get a job? So I started training one person at a time. And before I know it, another person would show up, another friend would show up. And I started asking myself, well, I'm like, man, I'm like, I have more friends than I realized because more and more people were coming to me to find out how to get these jobs. And I helped everybody get a job making 70, 80, 90, $100,000 a year. And what was interesting is that I didn't realize my purpose at that time. I simply thought I was helping people. But then in 2015, a company came to Rhode Island and they were this big company. They wanted to help people get jobs in technology and they asked me to be the lead instructor. I took the job and it wasn't before, it wasn't too long after that I realized that while this is a great idea, they wanted to hack education. It was really just, a, it wasn't too different than the existing education system. I went to the managers, I went to the people that ran the company and I told them, I said, listen guys, I think you can make a few changes and you could really end up hacking education. Did they listen to me? Not at all. And the company ended up failing, not only here in Rhode Island, but nationwide, it went through a lot of problems. But in that class, there was one student in there who we resonated. We, we shared some similar ideas about how education could be made to work for everyone, especially people from non-privileged backgrounds. And that person's in here today. His name is Cliff. Cliff, can you wave? That's Cliff right there. And so I found my tribe. And I felt like we were twins because we shared the same vision. We were completing each other's sentences. We both love geeky things. And we set off to create our own company called Career Devs. And that was in 2017. Three years later, we have created a school that does the following. It takes 12 months to receive a certificate in computer science. And we guarantee every graduate that they're going to land a job making between $50,000 and $80,000 a year as their first job. Some of our students are earning $100,000, $150,000, $115,000, dollars We just had one student earn $140,000 right, for their first full-time job. And there's an interesting quote that Nelson Mandela says, said, and my machine is trying to freeze up on me a little bit here. Nelson Mandela says, always lead from the back and let other people believe that they are in the front. Because Cliff and myself, we went around, we tried to work with schools, we tried to work with universities, telling people, hey, listen, we believe we figured it out one year instead of four years. And if you don't get a job at Career Devs within, after you graduate within six months, you never have to pay us anything. 
So we're really motivated to make sure our students get a job. But no one wanted to work for us. And that's okay because now we have close to 50 people that have gone out and have been able to get that job. And I can honestly say that we are hacking education. And it's a great feeling, even though it's been an uphill battle because it's gonna be lonely. And a lot of people are gonna doubt you because you know, you're starting off with you know, nothing. And you don't look like someone or something that's going to change the world, right? Neither Cliff or myself, we're not beautiful, we're not handsome, we can't sing like, you know, like Michelle, but we have an idea whose time has come and we found each other and now we're adding more and more people to that tribe. And I feel like we are in this community, we've reached that 25% level. We've never advertised, but every month, more and more students are coming, signing up for career devs and more and more companies are hiring our graduates. So what does this mean for you? It means that the future is in your hands. It's difficult to look forward and try to predict the future. But if you listen to the things that you said today, and I took a lot of notes on what the students were saying today. I can hear the seeds of the future, but you need that design thinking plan and ability to come together and find people that can put your ideas into motion. And, you know, You can't rely upon us as the adults. Every revolution that has started, whether it was the American Revolution, the French Revolution, every revolution starts off with young people. Every venture capitalist that I've ever spoken to, and after being at Brown University now as an entrepreneur in residence for several years, they're not really interested in people, older people with ideas. They're like, where are the young people with ideas? These are the billionaires. They know. If the billionaires know that the young people are the ones that they should put their money behind, then I believe that our education system should put our money and our investment and our time and our resources behind you as well. So take some time to meditate get into the practice of meditating, just thinking by yourself, not always being on the go, on the go, on the go, on the go, but taking that time to just think, to think deeply. Because as you do that, and you focus on the problems, you're gonna realize that all throughout your school experience through elementary school, middle school, and high school, that you have, you've actually been coming up with solutions because little things have been bothering you all along. And it doesn't seem like a lot until you begin connecting all those dots together. And I'm telling you, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna be sitting down one day and you're gonna say, ah, Eureka, I've got it. I have the idea. And you can be certain that there's, you have another Cliff Shawnier who's out there that's thinking about the same things and who wants to join you and connect as you move forward in hack education. So thank you so much for giving me this time to speak to you and as, as the entrepreneur in residence at Brown University, I wanna welcome you, any of you students to go to the entrepreneurship.brown.edu website. You'll find my profile there and you can sign up for a virtual office hour. There are other people that you can sign up with office hours as well. And Brown University opens up that door to everyone. Anyone on this call can really go there and do that. And it's a great school, ton of resources. You don't have to go to Brown to benefit from some of their resources. So once again, thank you to Venture Cafe. Thank you for everyone who participated. 
And I am really humbled that I had this opportunity to have a small part in this. And I'm hoping, hoping that this will be a spark that enables you to hack education. Thank you.